It is 6.02, Thursday for once evening. Call the meeting of the Whitley Select Board to order. First order of business meeting minutes. We've got minutes from November 28th and December 5th meetings. Any comments? No comments. No comments. Uh, I would yeah. move that we uh, uh, approve the meeting minutes from November 27th and December 5th. 28th. 28th. Sorry. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. Okay. Then we're okay. Well, Lawrence, any comments? No. Nope. No. Nope. Next. Public comments. Do we have any public? No. Anyone online? No. Okay. Next, we have a scheduled appointment. Bill Silverman from Toro Fair Day. I see Bill online on Zoom or whatever. So, what? Bill, what? Do you have a, any opening statement or comments? Sure. Uh so, uh, as you know, uh, my client uh, has opened for business, had a very nice opening, um, and we just were uh, thought we'd reach out uh, to Mr. Domina just regarding some recent changes in the law regarding host community agreements, um, and uh, he was kind enough to work with us, and I think we, we have a draft of a new host community agreement that's intended to be compliant with those changes, and we're in agreement. And, but I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have about it or any other issue. Brian, do you have any comment on it? Um, sure. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. It, um, so, this is what Phil said it's a, it's a revised host community agreement that's compliant with the, the recently enacted regulations that the Cannabis Control Commission adopted. Um, those regulations didn't give municipalities much discretion anymore, um, or even less discretion. Um, and the board had talked um, in past meetings about. Um, so this this host community agreement, as you as you've probably seen, includes or, or maintains the municipality's right to collect community impact fees, subject to the requirements of the new regulations. Um, so I think that was an important thing that we had talked about in the past about. Uh, keeping that right in there. If the select board in town were to, you know, to choose to go forward with that, in uh, look at the process that the CCC lays out. Um, other than that, there's not a lot. You know, there's not a lot of other stuff that the, the HCA does. Um, you know, it talks about responsibility to the company, responsibility to the town. Um, in this document, and this would be something new for the town. Um, it would set up a, a once per year meeting with the operators of the establishment just to sort of check in with them about, about mm -hmm. how things are going and if, if the board has any concerns. Um, and it, it sort of mirrors the existing agreement in terms of uh, the existing agreement in, in terms of, you know, if, if there's going to be changes to the facility, we'd like the, the operator to come back and talk to the board. Um, so that's that's really about it. Um, I think the, the main thing is here is that the town reserves the right to um, assess a community impact fee if it if, if it so chooses in, in the future. Mm -hmm. um, the regulations do provide for a waiver option where the, where the municipality could waive uh, the requirement of a, of a host community agreement, but that's not something that 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 I would recommend at this point. Do we have any thinking that the State is still work, going to be working to revise requirements or terms of HCAs. Uh, I don't think at this point they're going to. So, uh, yeah, yeah the, uh, I mean, at, at some point they're going to. They or they're supposed to come out with a uh, a, a template host community agreement at some point in the near future, um, and I don't know when that's when that's going to be or what that's going to look like. Um, I, I, I'm just asking, like, we've got a three, you have a three year term yeah. Yeah, in here, and whether. Yeah, so we, I mean, that we, I think things are a little topsy turvy at the Cannabis Control Commission right yeah. now. So in three years, who, I mean, who knows? Well, that's the thing. We'll yeah. see if there might we'll be any reason we would want to revise this before three years. Or rather than mm -hmm. wait 
Oh, yeah, for that three, yeah. given that things are still three if, people. If I, can, if I can weigh in, if, yeah. if it's helpful, um, you know, the the regulation and the law are, are pretty clear in terms of, you know, what's required at this point, which is, you know, you can't sort of set a percentage fee. You can't just say, you know, you can't, you, you have to pay 3%. That was sort of the common thing everybody did. And you can't just do a flat fee. The way it works from now on is, you know, every year under the regulations, uh, the town submits an invoice, you know, detailing what its actual expenses were. We then submit that to CCC. CCC reviews it, neither approves it or doesn't approve it or approves some of it, you know, disapproves the rest of it. And then whatever's approved, you pay. I, there are appeal rights if you want to. But I think the idea here, again, because we haven't really seen major impacts from most of these business, I think there's an expectation that you, we're not going to be talking about huge expenses. Obviously, if there was a significant event, you know, that that happened at one of these things that cost the town a lot of money, you have the ability to, to try to recoup the expenses from it. But I, I think everybody sort of anticipates that it's not going to be uh, a huge thing every year. And so, you know, what what the agreement does is it just says, yeah, you know, we'll we'll provide the documentation to show our expenses. So there may be a template document that comes out, but I can tell you, I doubt it's really going to be all that different than what you're looking at, because what you're looking at incorporates everything that's in the regulations. Uh, so I, I, you know, if, if you wanted to, you know, diminish the term a little bit to play it safe. We're happy to do that. Um, really, it's whichever way I'd like to go. I'm not sure it's going to make all that much difference in the long run because the regulations are out and the template's just going to follow them. Okay. Mr. Silverman, what, what is your position? Are you uh, the, the company's lawyer? Yeah, I'm counsel to the company. Oh. Okay, it didn't quite say in our in our agenda, so I just wanted to okay. clarify. You're talking okay. like you're counsel, so I just wanted to know. Um, okay. I, 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 would, I would tend to err on the side of caution since this is a new thing for all of us, your company, sure. your, your client's company, and for the town, and suggest initially a one-year agreement just to find out what it's like, and then... Uh, if things go well, to enter into a three-year agreement subsequent to that. That's fine for us. If if that's what the board's pleasure is, we're happy to do that. Okay. Um, I I don't feel strongly about it. I, okay. I, I'd be more comfortable with an initial one-year agreement because as of now, we don't know what kind of expenses will be approved or, you know, send in an invoice. And there's no track record of what what will be approved in general and what will not. Um, and I think there's enough up in the air right now. I'd rather go with a one-year agreement with an understanding that we will follow it up with a three-year agreement, assuming no change. All goes well. Yeah. yeah, assuming all goes well. No, no problem. We're we're happy to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, is that something that requires a vote now? Well, I was going to ask Brian. We probably need a vote. Brian, why don't we ask Brian? Let's ask we him. need a vote on that. He, he Brian goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I move that we uh, approve this agreement with an amendment to, uh, to the term and that the term of the agreement shall be one year rather than three years. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So. Thank you. We will... uh, one one other issue oh, uh, sure. yeah. that, that yeah. we wanted to touch on also, I think, on the agenda. So um, my client uh, is looking to uh, do delivery uh, of uh, cannabis to customers. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, is hoping to sort of engage with a delivery company. Delivery companies are a special uh, type of company, you know, that has to be uh, owned at least 51% by a social equity applicant. So it can't, my company can't do uh, it on its own. Uh, and Tess Mitchell is here. Uh, if Tess, if you want to uh, 
uh, come on right now. Um, my client is partnering with Tess, who is a social equity applicant, um, and they're forming a company. It's going to be called Enhanced Delivery. And what they're looking to do is the Enhance is going to sublease some of the space uh, from Toro Verde, um, you know, operating uh, now, as you know, as, as Cheech and Chong Dispensaria. They'll sublease some space and they'll run a what's called a courier delivery company if the board uh, is amenable to it out of that space. And basically, uh, they will deliver from this dispensary. Uh, Cheech and Chong's has some other affiliates uh, that they would uh, also do some deliveries from. Um, but it's a pretty minimal operation. Um, I, you know, delivery is probably already going on um, in the area, but the companies are probably based elsewhere that are doing it. Um, and there is some benefit here because, uh, you know, the town does collect a 3% sales tax, as you know, on retail sales and allowing the company to deliver to some of the surrounding communities actually has the potential to take in some revenue uh, that you'll collect even more 3% tax on than, than what it's currently doing. So the what we're asking, I think, is that we can separately, uh, you know, work on a host community agreement uh, for enhanced delivery, which would be subleasing some of the space from Cheech and Chong's. So we're happy to answer any other questions you might have. But it stands to reason why we talked, I think, heard about the delivery options before. Uh, is there any, any liability or anything that we can think of, any reason why we would not want to do this? Uh, uh, from from the from the, the standpoint of the select board, I yeah. I, um, I I wouldn't say why not. Um, yeah. Obviously, there's going to have to be discussion with the uh, yeah. to make sure that whatever they're going to do is is compliant with the the land use aspect that's right. being proposed. So yeah, yeah. I mean we we I think the question before us is would we enter into an HCA with them? They mm -hmm. are they have other hurdles mm -hmm. to cross that we don't have any. Thing to do with right. right. I was trying to remember we had discussions earlier this year, maybe at the town meeting about there was a bylaws. Yeah, by yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. I honestly don't recall uh, what was decided. I think we changed the bylaw to allow for right. We did to, to allow yes. for delivery. For our delivery right. kind, of kind of business. Thank yeah. you for refreshing my memory. I am so surprised that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So if our you, own bylaws allow this. That's good news. Right, given that the bylaws specifically allow it. Yeah, it, it does need, I, think that, I can't remember all the details, but you might need a special permit between the um, planning board or the zoning board of appeals. Right. What one of those groups right. it has yeah. more power than we do. Yeah. I know, right. more power than we do. Shocking. What about that? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> so... So okay. I think I think basically the question is are are we willing to uh, to go uh, to start it. the process on yeah. a HCA for that? And uh, I, I would say yeah. Yeah, I, I can say, yeah. See any reason why not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Then then if if uh, if possible, I, I'll uh, just start working with Brian on that one as well. Um, and we can just, you know, come before you when, when we have that one ready and we'll we'll get the final vote on that if that works for you. That sounds good. Could you partner with a couple of the local pizza places and have them <laughs> deliver to the hill towns in West Waitley? <laughs> they, uh, they don't. You could talk to the Cannabis Control Commission about that. I'm not sure <laughs> they'll love that yeah. idea, but yeah, yeah, yeah it will be an HCA to right. deliver pizza. That's for sure. And <laughs> they deliver it, it could be a dual job. Yeah. Yeah. Give me meat, give me my pizza. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, listen. The last time I was before you, somebody was looking to do a topless dispensary. So if you want us to combine all three, maybe we could think about that too. Or maybe that's and not I'll such a good idea. So we'll we'll stick with the delivery true. company. It's totally up to you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. All right. Okay. So Brian, you will. Yeah, we're talking to Phil or your representative about that. Uh, enjoy some food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right.
and we don't need any kind of motion on that. Uh, COVID-19, COVID-19 is spreading rapidly once again through the yeah. through the area. Tests are available. County Office's Library Police Station. Yeah. Also, I'll tell you that those packages have four tests in them, not two, which is awesome. Yes, we've got new new tests yeah. that have four tests each. Four tests, yeah. Mm. Four tests for the price of two, which is free. free. Right. <laughs> Next item. It's just nice. Old though. business. Discuss and appoint a review committee to evaluate and rank proposals received by the town for the purchase and restoration of the center school. Brian can tell us. Yeah, the staff. So the town has received two proposals um, in response to the medical RP. Um, just really quickly, both of them are going to seek residential uses of the building. Um, obviously, in the, the terms of the sale, that would be subject to a historic preservation restriction. In terms of the profit, um, uh, Mass General Law 30B requires a review committee to evaluate the proposals. Based on the the value of the value, whatever the criteria in the thing, yeah. valuative or whatever that word is, mm -hmm. um, to review the proposals um, and score them and provide their recommendation to the select board. So, um, if we could uh, sort of put together a committee of people mm -hmm. that we think should do that, I think that would be the a good next step. And this would probably be a few meetings in the next three weeks. Yeah. yeah, I could actually do that. I'm I'm on sabbatical starting like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she was. Yeah. So if, if, Joyce, if you want, if you want to do this, I, yeah, I'm happy yeah, yeah, to be on that committee. Who else would be good to be on there? Do you think we should probably what what should we aim for? Like three people, four people. Uh, so I thought maybe some uh, planning board, mm -hmm. um, historical commission. It was recommended to me some we did have the center school visioning committee yeah yeah that's good somebody from that and maybe somebody from the finance committee i don't know that that's i don't feel too strongly about that uh, yeah there's not a lot of the, both of the proposals sort of the financial implications are the same in the sense that it would be privately held and taxes would be paid yeah um, right. there's not much of a financial decision mm -hmm. and, and there's obviously price differences but it wasn't that significant uh, uh, i know that the Historical Commission met earlier this week, and that they, assuming we set up a committee, that they were closing it. Donna Wiley. Oh, okay, great. Be on the committee. Uh, I know okay, Donna's expressed an interest in doing it. Um, um, who from the planning board might be? I have to look up who's on the planning board. That's uh, changed. Grant, um, Sarah Cooper, Cooper Judy. Judy. Um, I'm this. Um, oh, I don't like Brent. He's really nice. I mean, well, okay. Yeah. I know that's not the. Well, and smart and, and yeah. thoughtful. And, right. Um, Brian, why don't you contact Brent, who's now the chair, and have them at their next meeting? Yeah, if they, if they could. And when is their next meeting? Yeah, yeah the next school is going to be January. Yeah, make you a mile. Yeah, JD Ross is the other person. Uh, Brent or or, or see, see if you know, they can come to a consensus without a meeting. Yeah, so if you point the chair or their designee, I think that would work. Right. Okay. okay. Oh, all right. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Um, and and make sure that you know that this is a couple meetings, a short term sort of thing. Yeah. And center school vision can you know. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still posted anywhere? I think. Jenny Morrison was very involved with that. Jenny Morrison was chair. Um, I, I think that's still also on the Okay, why don't we do the same thing with that and appoint the chair or the chair's designee? What do you say? From the vision committee. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Judy, Jenny is the chair. Uh, Volontea Baker Jones, Mark Roussier, Rich Karpesky, Fred Orlowski, Marissa Hashizumi, Melissa Mikasel, Mary Stewart, and Stan Scordillis. So, could okay. we 
say Jenny or her designee. Right. And did we determine that there was not really sufficient financial impact? To include the finance committee then? Well, they might want to be in on the discussion, just. Um, yeah, all in Stan Bunch, Andy, Tom Mahaj, and Kirkendall, Brenda Doherty, and J.D. Lewis. And Paul Newland. Paul Newland. Oh, he's, he's not his name, it's not his name. Yeah, I was going to say, it, uh, and Brian would be, of course, on this committee as well, because we wouldn't know what to do without Brian there. So, yeah, but Brian, Brian, but that would there, be as, as administrator, not as a voting. Oh, member. okay. Ah. Okay. And so, if we have four people, we're potentially setting ourselves up for a tie. Um, well, I'll approach Paul if you want for finance committee. Sure. Yeah. What Paul? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would say Paul Newland because he was actually involved in a lot of thinking about the center school as well. Yeah. Because um, that was happening at the like the his last term on select board uh, was when a lot of that stuff got started. Well, I think. With the other committees we're leaving it to the chair or designee, you should probably stay consistent with that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so cross that one ball. I, I didn't okay. I didn't write the last okay. one. So okay. Um, or instead, okay, so I think we've got two definite members and three at the discretion of the various committees. That sounds good. And we hope we yeah. can get and hopefully they can get that set and move in. Right. And should I should emphasize that this is not going to take a long time. Only two proposals. And right. We might even be able to be done in one meeting if we do our homework before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to do on that? No. Nope. nope. Moving along to discuss and vote whether to approve local licenses for the calendar year 2024. We have a yeah. pretty list of licenses. They look a lot like last year's list. Mm -hmm. Looks familiar. Any comments? No comments. Oh, well, a question. Do we, when we move and vote, do we do them one at a time or as a bundle? We can do it as a list. We can do the slate. Uh, unless there's an objection to any given one, we can do it as a group. I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Do we'll I have a motion? I move that we approve our local li license list as presented for 2024. Second. And for the discussion, yep. all in favor? Aye. Aye. So this means there'll be a big old pile of stuff out there to sign. Oh, are you on the Adam? The next item, the discussion vote whether to allow the Wavy Snowmobile Club to use the former Demeo property on State Road as a parking area for access to the snowmobile trail network. We've done this every year in the past. Yeah. yeah. Any I move that we uh, uh, approve allowing this snowmobile club to use the former Demeo property on State Road yes, as second. a parking area. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. To discuss and vote whether to approve a pay rate of $26.61 per hour for the assistant town clerk position. What yes, so this was all the assistant town clerk and assistant town clerk, uh, treasurer collector, always had the same pay rate, like full, uh, yeah, in, in the past. And then, um, conversations when Lynn took over the assistant treasurer collector because of her training role, there was additional compensation added to that. So that sort of decoupled the two positions. So we never really voted on the, on the what should be the assistant town clerk rate, which this is last year, but the, the coal that was awarded. So, mm -hmm. okay. It's kind of just- It's pretty, 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 pretty normal. Yeah. 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 
Okay, well, I vote that we uh, approve the rate of $26.00 so per hour for the assistant town clerk position. Second. And for the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, to discuss a notice of acquisition from the Massachusetts Department of Fish and Game of a 22-acre parcel in West Waverly. Yeah. Yep, the state's buying it. We don't have any, we don't get to reject this or anything, right? No, it's a sale between the private land. Private land. Oh, well. Does okay. that mean it's coming off the tax rolls, or maybe it wasn't really a significant yeah. um, tax So, rolls. depending on when the sale closes, the town might get the, the remainder of the taxes for that year, or to get the remainder plus. The next years, but after that, it'll just become part of the pilot payment that the town receives for state of land, which is like, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I looked at the map, it has no frontage, no, right. no development, so the taxes on our problem fairly minimal to begin with. Yeah, it's up where but the, I but, but it'll be, yeah, it's going to be like smaller that. than the pilot payment, though. Yeah, so yeah. it's a net loss in revenue for the town, but it's not what we can do anything about it. Yeah, right. So we, oh, well, we acknowledge receipt of the letter from the state okay. and their purchase. We might be done before seven. We might be done before six thirty. They talk really fast. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to shut up? To discuss the license expiration notice from the Massachusetts Department of Telecommunications and Cable regarding the expiration of Comcast Cable Franchise Agreement on December 11, 2026. Okay, this will take more than 30 seconds. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't have much to discuss other than the, yeah. the fact that we received a note. Well, we received the information from, from Mass Department of, uh, what is it, Telecommunications? Uh, yeah. Uh, Mass Department of Telecommunications. You know, but just alerting us to the fact that the, um, the license is going to expire in three years and that the town if it so chooses, could start the formal ascertainment process. Uh, it needs to be started between 30 and 36 months. And then it, in the packet, it lays out sort of the specific process where the town would identify the, the performance of the cable operator and the needs of the town. And then uh, the town could issue an RFP and the, uh, the cable provider could respond to the RFP with a proposal. And then the town could hold a public hearing and it's a it's a long process, and right. mm -hmm. once you get reading through all of that, then there's a, something on on the back page that says, or you could do it through an informal process, or you might do it at parallel tracks an informal negotiation. You know, formal negotiation because there's certain rights that the parties have under federal yeah. law as opposed to mm -hmm. doing it informally in certain timelines that need to be met in order to keep those rights. Um, I mean, long story short, uh, the license would expire in three years. The entertainment process would have the thirty six. Three years, the 36 months would have started on December 11th. Yeah. Um, I've received nothing from Comcast. You yeah. know, and uh, Joyce may have been involved. Great. In the previous involved one, in so. the last two to go. Let's say, do we, oh, do we, do we, have, do we yeah. have an active cable? Well, it's yeah, oh, it me and Gary Stone. I think, okay. Or Randy Sibley. Or Randy Sibley, sorry. Yeah. Me and Randy Sibley. And we have not met since the last day. Well, I think it's time. For you. It might be time to meet me. To meet but again. what we've typically done in the past is we negotiate along with Sunderland and Deerfield because theirs are also up for renewal. Um, we hire this awesome attorney um, named Bill Solomon, um, who still uses the flip phone, odd uh, thing. But uh, he's really good. He understands the um, the cable laws and the uh, situation. He's a very good negotiator. He's gotten us good contracts in the past. Um, and that uh, money is what keeps FCAT afloat that keeps those mm -hmm. kids off the street and making videos um, and uh, it helps keep our uh, our public meetings going online and then making them available. So uh, I'm guessing since that has been a recipe for success in the past, um, that's probably what we should do, but maybe start, maybe the cable advisory committee should get in touch with the folks in Sunder, yeah, your field and see where they three, are. Three year window is yeah. now open. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. I have an okay boomer kind of question. What exactly is provided to us under the license? Some money. Some money? Some money, yeah. Um, it's usually a percentage of their um, income 
Who said that? No, we're kind of through cable subscriptions. Oh, okay. um, and it used to be if you bought stuff on cable TV, that part of that was part of their profits as well. Oh, okay. um, I don't know if that still is. Um, but yeah, a percentage of their revenues from the, what they're doing business in the town goes to support the public access. And it's capped at a certain amount. And I think we're right up there at the cap. Okay. Interesting. Um, the other things you can negotiate for is to get cable put up in different parts of town that don't have it, mm -hmm. they don't have it already. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, can we negotiate about double poles? Um, I, I or pizza delivery. <laughs> and, or, yeah, I don't think the pizza delivery probably is going to be it. But, yeah. Um, but the, yeah, so that's typically uh, okay. how, Thank you. how it's happened over the years. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, people. Yeah. Okay. Go we'll we'll talk to the other member of your committee if he has time because he just moved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. um, but we're hiring, so they'll come in. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Updates from select board members or any other boards and committees. Um, I don't think I want to spoke had a conversation with JP Kennedy, moving quite nicely with the fire department, uh, and is putting together a schedule for training for in various localities in the state for the firefighters, which has not has sort of slipped in the last couple of years that there hasn't been as much training. He's picking it up and that's they're doing work on the inside of the firehouse to clean up and reconfigure off the space. So everything sounds good there. Okay. Any oh um the um senior centers Going like gangbusters. You probably saw the article in the paper the other day. They're having Christmas dinner. No, they had a Christmas party. And I think somewhere in the fine print, um, we're delivering Christmas dinners on Christmas morning um, to something like 80. I think it's 80 dinners, but some of them are two to a household. Mm -hmm. So um, something like 40 places we're going to be delivering on Christmas morning. Excellent. Um, yeah. Is that 40 places with through, through the whole service area. Seems yes, it's or, in the, or in Wakeley. No, it's not for I don't think it's 40 in Wakeley. Uh, I I am I am the coordinator of the transportation okay. part. So I just got the list today and, and I have to figure out where on the map and kind of cluster there. them for the people who are going to be driving. So uh, but they, they've got lots of volunteers and they've got uh, so that's that's going to happen again. That was a real success last year. So that's the one thing they did. Also, have a Christmas party with Santa the other day, and that's the thing that mentioned that in the paper. Mm. Um, well, okay. Yeah, uh, I was attempting to attend the water commissioner's meeting via Zoom, and there's apparently some kind of technical glitch that I was mm -hmm. unable to get on. So we're going to be clarifying that and working it. Okay. Okay. And administrator updates. Right. Um, yeah, so update on the town talent uh, issues, not issues, but uh, position in, in the, the Brooklyn accounting program, status of that. Um, there was a meeting of the, of the towns who are participating in the, the Brooklyn accounting program, the shared accounting program, the regional accounting program, and it seems like a number of towns are going to look elsewhere. Um, and lead mm -hmm. the accounting program. Uh, at least it seems like I believe there was seven, possibly seven towns on the call, and three of them said that they were looking to lead the program. Um, so it's always been in the back of my mind. Waitley currently shared the, the town account with Shelmer mm -hmm. that it may be in the town's best interest to also lead the program and hire the town accountant directly through some sort of uh, IMA, sh you know, shared employee agreement. Um, so I did have a meeting with the, the Shelburne uh, town administrator last week to talk about that. And the Shelburne select board is on board with uh, pursuing, obviously, the, the details of the, of the agreement will be important, um, but that's something that, that they would be interested in doing with us. Um, so right now we share them through the Burkhart program. Right. And if we were to leave the per card program, we just need a different agreement. Yeah. And this doesn't solve the 
software problem. It does not. Okay. Um, there's been different conversations about about the software, um, but that it's it, it's kind of uh, there hasn't been yeah, there hasn't been any give from from the companies. No, there. they are mm -hmm. the solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I think most of they've done is they've been willing to to um, take a little bit off one of those. I don't remember which one of the fees it was because they really already have our data. If we stay with the same ones, uh -huh. it's not that our data is going somewhere. But it's, yeah. it's already right. starting the servers. They just need to, to whatever to move it around or access yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really the main benefit of the accounting program was that there was a significant discount on on the software because all those accounts shared a single license. Mm -hmm. um, with with that going away, um, in the town having to, to really pay full price for it. Uh, we would really be paying the overhead for for a fur cog employee who doesn't necessarily uh, create the, any overhead costs at, at at the fur cog offices because they mm -hmm. they come to work here and they go to work in, in shelter. So it's right. but there's really it really doesn't make financial sense to right. to stay with the so program. The costs may go down a little bit. If we're sharing this employee, well, the cost on the employee, but then get the software. The software, the software will certainly offset that. Yeah, or, or probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 probably more than offset. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, the the account that we currently have, the Derek's been with us for three years, and it's it's great. Um, <laughs> and we're very happy that she's our account and that she's willing to, you know, willing to oh. to, to stay with the pounds. Um, so if that's all right, that's something that we'll pursue. Is yeah, pursue that with Shelburne. Yeah, with Shelburne. Yeah, I, I think that's the best path forward. That sounds like a good idea. Um, fair share amendment. So from the fair share amendment, the town received an additional eighty-eight thousand dollars and some change in Chapter ninety funds mm -hmm. put towards our roads and bridges. Um. The annual transfer station inspection report. Yeah, there weren't any uh, findings that haven't been addressed. There was uh, we needed a new fire extinguisher, which has been taken care of. Um, Bill Road reconstruction project that is still going on, although we don't talk about it too often because it's sort of in a design black yeah. hole. Yeah. Um, but 100% design has been submitted for that project. Great. Right. So that been submitted to mass that. Obviously, there's a, a comment period, but once that 100% design is approved, that's where our work begins more in earnest with right of way issues. And that right of way issue is going to bring into uh, bring into Article 97 the issue and mitigation of those impacts. We're still trying to figure out that it's going to get down into the weeds a little bit. Um, but you remember that we were talking about the retaining wall that was being used. Yeah. And the, the question is, the, the, they're going to use what, what's called a soil nail wall, which is just driving long nails into the into the embankment to help support the wall. Uh, but each one of those nails is going to be outside of the right of way into land owned by the city of Northampton, which is Article 97 protection. So the the question that we have the the state right now is, uh, is each one of those subsurface nails a, a Article 97 impact? Where we where we need to provide compensation for that, and then what is the compensation for that? It, it may just be that it's just easier to just draw a rectangle and say the depth of the right. of the nail, the depth of the wall, and just say it's right. not worth calculating. You know, every mm -hmm. single nail that penetrates. Uh -huh. I, I would think drawing a rectangle because the nail essentially make the, the other yeah, and also <laughs> area it's unusable. Also make the argument that it's sort of a de minimis. Intrusion in the onto the Article 97 yeah. land. It's because it's not really changing the use of the land. It's still watershed land. It's still, yeah. Yeah. although I think the city of Northampton and I disagree with this point. It the land is still functioning the same way. And it's, yeah, you could yeah. argue these nails are not changing the function. Right, but um, so anyways, that that that's coming down the road once that hundred percent design is approved by MassCon. We'll have further discussions about that. Um, Santa Parade 
is on the Saturday, twenty third. The twenty third. I read about that in the newspaper. Yes, starting here at four thirty, and there are maps. I don't know if we have one on the. There's definitely on Facebook. What if we have a map on the website? Maybe we maybe we we'll put a map up on the website. Yeah. Also, so people yeah. can see. Um, definitely on Facebook though. Sort of the estimated timing. So start four thirty. It starts from here. So. Cool. Wear light clothing so that the people can, uh, the drivers can see you and have flashlights so they know to stop and slow down because if they can't see you, like drive by, right? mm -hmm. would, would make some kids happy. So yeah. no, they tend to go pretty slow. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Anything else? Anything, Anything else from the board? I'm not anticipated. I would move that we adjourn this meeting. I would second that. And any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Happy holidays, everybody. And happy yes. New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. See you after. Oh, in, uh, next meeting, January 9th.